Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Let's Play Grimoire, Heralds of the Winged Exemplar with the Naga Ranger Party. Now these guys do not look a lot like Nagas, yes, but that is only because I changed the pictures, because I like these pictures more than the Naga pictures, and there aren't eight Naga pictures anyway. Now you might wonder, Boris, weren't you talking about a Dragon Metalsmith party? Did you drop that? Yes, I actually did. It was not because I could not make them, although they're pretty, pretty hard to make. Because in order to make a Drake Metalsmith, you need at least 30 points in character creation. And God, do you roll a lot for that. Trust me, I did it. Ranger Nagas only need 20 points if you make the male. However, you're never getting any bonus points because you need 20 points to make the Naga Ranger and you only get points to distribute after character creation if you have a surplus or leftover points of 15, which of course we don't have because, well, you can roll 32 and you need 20 points to create the Ranger. So there is actually no point and no way in hell you can get 50 points left over, uh, 15 points left over. So that's something we have to live with. So, before I explain to you why we're Naga Rangers, let me explain why I wanted to build Metalsmith Drakes. The Drakes are excellent close combat fighters without weapons because they do 3d4 combat, um, close combat damage without weapons, with, the, with their claws. And I find that pretty good compared to the most weapons you start with. And the idea was that you actually... Um, get more bonuses from skills on fighting without weapons that you get with fighting with weapons because if you're fighting with a sword you're only getting bonus from blade from the blade skill and that's it but if you're fighting without weapons you're getting your damage or your overall combat effectiveness from the skill of hand-to-hand -hand combat plus iron hand plus ninjutsu um, Plus, apparently, a lethal blow, but you get that with a weapon too. So actually, weapons are backed up by two skills, lethal blow and um, the weapon skill itself. And hand-to-hand -hand combat is backed up by four skills, meaning hand-to-hand, -hand, lethal blow, ninjutsu, and iron hand. So I find that very, very good. The metalsmith I took because they can take sage spells, and because they are able to have a lot of hit points. And I want everyone in the party to be that. Because I really hate the fact that you have your big guys in the front. And if someone comes to the idea of hitting your back guys. They immediately die. Because they've got no hit points and nothing. And you cannot rotate. Normally you can fight like the Roman army. And I pretty much like that in every game to do that. You have the same kind of characters who can take damage. And if your guys get damaged. You take the runs from the back and put them in the fronts. And the guys in the back can heal. Now about healing. I took the Drake Metalsmith combination because the Sages, as Metalsmith can cast Sage spells, can later on cast um, healing, for example. So that helps a bit. However, where was the downside in that? Well, for one, I fall short with the metalsmith in hand-to-hand -hand combat because I could never learn ninjutsu. Only two classes can learn ninjutsu and that is the Chester and the Assassin. And making a Drake metalsmith an Assassin is uh, not easy if not impossible if I remember that right. So I had to find a different way to do things. And then I found out that you can actually make a more competent closed combat fighter without weapons of a Naga because while a Naga does 2d6, which is the same maximum damage as a dragon does, um, only a little less minimum damage, a Naga poisons you with every attack. Now you say, Boris, where is the fun in that? Well, that's quite easy. If you get poisoned by one character, you might laugh it off. If you get poisoned by eight characters, boy, are you poisoned. You are poisoned terrible. It's very unlikely that you will survive that round, even if you survive the close combat. Now, did I teach everyone that? That always takes so much time with the, with the skilling here. Um, now, you might wonder, how about the spell casting? Well, 
Nagas are not particularly good or bad at spellcasting as far as I know. The important point is that they become ranges, quite acceptable, you only need 20 points, and as you've got no bonus points left, you can simply roll them easily. Everything about 20 is your point, is, is your friend, and there is no use in having 29 or 30 or just 20. If you roll 20 or higher, you can make a Naga character out of them. And they can have quite a lot of hit points, and they can have quite a lot of magic magic points. Let me show this to you. Wait a second. So they get from 80, I think the maximum I've ever rolled is 21 life points and 11 magic points. And that is okay, that is pretty good. You will survive on that. You will, trust me. And they're getting a lot of hit points when they level up as well, so there is no problem. So even if they hit your back ranks, they will not be easy pickings for the enemy. And if you think about the Whistle, rest easy, these guys can use Whistles as well. They might not be able to use instruments and sing the enemy to sleep, but honestly you don't have to sing to corpses, do you? And this party will only leave corpses in their way. Now. What else is about Nagas? Nagas make pretty good assassins. They get, gain 1.8 more skill points than others when they are Naga assassins. That does not mean we will end with Naga assassins. Maybe we will end with Naga warriors because of the um, armor selection. Yes, I know Nagas cannot wear pants or shoes, but that is not the issue. The issue is that they can then wear, for example, plate body armor or torso armor or you know what I mean. Um, Nagas, furthermore, has have the same or even better total attribute points from the start than the Drake Metalsmith will have. They have 440 total points when you, if you count all the attribute points together. And when you switch classes, all your skills attribute points are put back to the minimum that you need to become that class you've selected. So we will not spend any bonus points that we get from level ups until we reach our final class because you're keeping those. If you have, if you reach level 10 and you've never spent a single bonus ability point from your level ups anywhere, you will have them in your no new class to distribute. If you've spent them, they're all lost because it will send you... You have, let's say, you reach level 10 um, Ranger and you've put your speed up to 100 and then you switch to Assassin, then your speed will fall to 50 because that is the requirement for being an Assassin. So that's pretty harsh. That's pretty harsh. Um, so we'll not spend, uh, spend any points there. However, all the skill points that you spend and all the spells that you learn, you will keep them. By the way, an assassin can learn, learn necroman necromancy spells. So we will actually be able to cast Traumatorque spells. Um, so all the damage dealing stuff and from the ranges and later on we'll be able to cast and healing of course. Traumatorques can heal. Poison, disease, wounds, wonderful. Just amazing. Just what we need to make this party really, really effective. And we'll be able to cast necromancy spells as well, which is wonderful. Um, drakes have a very high or the highest natural armor and natural attack. Equal only by the Nagas. I think there is no other that has the same bonus of 20 to everything. And that's quite nice, isn't it? So we're good close combat fighters, we um, have better points than the dragons. Yes, we don't have the fire breath, but we actually don't need it because we'll be able to cast fire on the enemy. And we have the poisonous bit, which makes us far better close combat hand-to-hand -hand fighters than the drakes will ever be. Um, and we'll be able to switch our class to assassin, which the metalsmith, I think, cannot do. So I think this is a wonderful combination of class, the Ranger Naga, then going to um, Assassin later on, and then maybe to Warrior, because we'll be able to cast spells from the Tomatog and the um, 
Necromancer will be able to have a lot of hit points from the ranger part. Will be able, uh, will have a lot of spell points from the ranger parts because they're all, always or also getting good spell points. Will be able to poison the enemy and will have a lot of skill points because. Let me show you something. Do we have everything 12? 12, 12. What was that? 12. Quick control, quick check. 12, 12, 12. 12, 12, 12. And yes, all the scouts get basic swimming skill points. Hooray! So we don't have to put points into swimming. We can keep our precious physical skill points. Uh, you need iron hands. They didn't notice that iron hand. Wonderful. How about you? You've got iron hands and accuracy up. Wonderful. You've got iron hands and accuracy up. Wonderful. And you have iron hands and accuracy up. Wonderful. So as I said, rangers only need 900 points to level up. Ooh, and we get better at scouting. Isn't that beautiful? Um, when you level up, you get skill points. You all know that. And you get skill points according to what the what class you are. That's a fixed number. Well, it's it's random, but you some get 0.5, uh, 50 or 0.5 percent. Of skill points and in in melee and martial arts and there for example warriors I think get gain 0 1 point, 0 point 1 skill points in mental so they will never get a lot of mental skill points however they will get a lot of martial skill points but what do we need we need a lot of physical skill points because what do you know what do you use a lot of martial skill points for you don't because you're only using one weapon normally so the all these skill points you get here on more or less I would not say wasted but you can by the way you can train them by slicing up people so you don't need a lot of skill points here to distribute you need a lot of skill points here because you got iron hands you got lethal blow you got um, ninjutsu later on and you will have to learn for example hiding could be useful is hiding in this section? Yes, it's stealth court now these days. Um, you get my point. You need a lot of points in your physical in your um, physical section. Now, of course, they're not getting as many mental, but I don't consider mental skills that important. For one, you can um, make up for that with most uh, of the spells. Most of the mental skills can be uh, dealt with spells. For example, identifying, which is a saying or something like that and you don't need to identify your target you can beat the crap of them no matter what they are and if it says it's a mushroom and in reality it's a dragon if you beat the crap out of him it doesn't matter anyway so about this identifying who cares that much yes about the spell casting that could be important but you will get enough spells with the ranger and with the assassin to be able to cast your spells okay-ish I say okay-ish so, quick level up with the rangers because they only need 900 uh, experience points. So we use that and we'll get our level ups. Let's cross fingers. 14 hit points is okay. Add magic points isn't that much. Fellowship we don't need. Willpower we don't need. Six bonus attributes points that we will not spend. Now, as you can see, we were not very lucky here. We put these points into backstabbing because backstabbing cannot be trained very well. And we'll put one point into hand-to-hand -hand, and the rest of the point we'll put into lethal blow. And we'll not use the mental skills yet. We could um, already put them somewhere here if we need to. But actually mythology is not necessary. Poisoning is not necessary. Um, invocation, incarnation, incantation, bother, a saying. We actually don't need a lot of those. We could take um, that scribe thing, or we could take alchemy later on, because I think alchemistry is built for the ranger skill, a uh, ranger spells. But we can think about that later. How many hit points, please? Ten, which is not a lot. Point taken. Constitution is welcome. Willpower, don't care. Wisdom, 
four bonus points, which is okay. Very little skill points. Again, very, very shameful. Very shameful. One point into hand to hand. The rest goes into lethal blow. And we're not pen not distributing those points. How many health points? 13. 10 magic points is okay. Willpower, constitution, fellowship, don't care. Two points, attributes, that's not a lot. We're not very lucky with the skill points. Nagas do not get any bonuses for skill points when they're rangers, sadly. They get when they become assassins, but not uh, uh, for rangers, sadly. I will not spend these points. Maybe we have to spend our bonus points when we reach level 10 in order to, refill the, uh, to fill the requirements for the assassin. But we'll keep as many bonus points as we can because when you switch classes, you will reset your stats. I cannot say that often enough. You will reset your stats to the minimum requirements of the class you change to. So, for example, if you take your ranger up to speed 100 and you switch to... Assassin, your speed will be 50 because that's the minimum requirement of the assassin. So that is pretty important. We'll you keep as many bonus points as we can until we reach our final class. Because otherwise these points are lost. Yes, we'll invest those that we need to reach um, the class requirements for assassins, but the rest will keep in storage. Vitality, 9 magic, devotion, intelligence import, because actually assassins need intelligence. Nobody knows why. Um, oops, we don't need accents. Can we tell we only need backstabbing because maybe we go to backstab someone. Hand to hand combat can be trained simply by killing people, so we're not investing a lot of points there. We need to invest in lethal blow and our enhance because lethal blow levels a bit, but actually not a lot by using it as far as I know. Um, Iron Hands will not level anyway. No way. You can only put points into that. And that's the only thing that will ever level it up. Oh, look at this. Isn't that... Oh, God, is that beautiful. We put 10 points here and the rest will put into Iron Hands. That was a wonderful level up when it comes to skill points. Wonderful hit points here. Willpower, Constitution. Five attribute points. Excellent. I'll take that. Skill points, however, not that satisfying. Not that satisfying at all. Sadly, sadly. One, oh, one point here and the rest of the points in lethal blow until we reach 10 and then we switch. Hit points are okay. Magic points are okay. Willpower, Wisdom, Constitution. Six bonus points. Thank you, sir. That is excellent. The skill points aren't that good, but we'll live with that. I can put them into shields, point taken. We could put them into shields because when you do hand-to-hand -hand combat, you can normally use a shield, and that is quite effective. However, we don't absolutely need to. Part against 1,000 experience points, and yes, boy, do rangers level up fast. Sages level up a little bit faster, and I think thieves, but they're about the top of the class when it comes to leveling up easily. You cannot say that much for assassins, though they level up, I think, the second slowest because they need tons of XP's to level up. With that being said, we should disequip our daggers because we're not in the dagger business. We're in the fist in the face business, and I mean that seriously. Now you can see our hit points. Isn't that beautiful? Everyone is above 30 hit points and we're just level 2. So the enemy, whoever it is, will have a hard time killing us. And it will get even harder for them. A lot harder because we'll train up and we'll level up fast. Hopefully. Well, not hopefully. I will see to that. So we'll go up here and we'll see each other again with the next fight. And I hope, I hope, I sincerely hope you will give my Naga Ranger party a chance, a shot. Watch it. Say me what you want. Say me what you think. Give me tips. I will appreciate everything you'll give to me because you've already given um, me a lot of information and done a very, very good job as viewers with my other videos of Grimoire and I would approve the same uh, help with the other games I play and I put online. I'm thinking about doing some Sorcerer King Rivals thing if you would be interested in that. And we'll see each other next time when we send these guys into battle and into fray. See you all next time. Bye.